All right, so we're going to return now to line integrals, having spent some time talking about vector fields. Um, and, and of course, we're going to move on from this type of line integral we already looked at where we're integrating scalar fields uh, and move on to integrating vector fields. Um, so whenever the setup, you've got some curve, could be in the plane, could be in space. I've drawn it in space, right? The way you integrate here is, well, I mean, you think of this as, as sort of, you know, the, the default parameterization is, is kind of using the kind of arc length parameter, right? And you may recall from Calculus 3 that in some scenarios, arc length is a convenient parameter to use. One of the nice things about using arc length as a parameter is it means that as you move along the curve, you're always moving at unit speed, right? Um, it, it's parameterizing so that you're kind of always moving at constant speed, um, which can be convenient. Uh, what's not so convenient is, is that uh, if you're trying to calculate things, the arc length parameter is not really a great computational parameter. It's nice to have some sort of simpler parameterization that you can use to evaluate your integral, right? So typically you choose some other parameterization. Um, again, this is one of these places where we abuse notation. Really, um, we should be thinking of this R as producing points, but we think of it as a vector valued function. Um, you can think of it whichever way you want. Um, we, we kind of blur the distinction. Uh, Right, because really f is a function of, of a point, not of a vector. But that's okay. We, we understand what this means. So it's f of r of t, right? We multiply by the magnitude of r prime. So here's your velocity, right, times dt. This is how we compute things. Um, so just to do a, do a quick example, um, we'll just do the setup. We won't do the evaluation. Um, so let's say... We have something like, you know, R of T is, let's say it's T cos T, T sine T, and well, maybe T, something like this, right? Um, yeah, let's do that. Um, so this would be, if you were, were going to draw this thing, we could do that if we were so inclined. Um, maybe we'll do this for, you know, t going from 0 to, to 2 pi, although you could certainly extend beyond there. Um, what you have is, is a curve that kind of, you know, comes out and it spirals around as it goes up. So it, it gets bigger and it goes up as it spirals. In fact, um, notice that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So this curve actually lives on a cone, right? So we could draw it if we wanted to. We could draw in that cone, and we could try to put this spiral going around the cone if we were, if we were so inclined. Um, but it's not necessary here. Um, R prime. Well, OK, R prime takes a bit of work, right? Um, Cos t minus t. I'm regretting my choice. And then we've got sine t minus t cos t. And then we've just got 1. Um, so the magnitude, here's where I'm regretting my choice. Right? It's going to be, oh, what is it going to be? It's going to be big old square root. I think some things simplify, but let's, let's go through it. Um, cos squared t minus 2t cos t sine t plus t squared sine squared t um, plus sine squared t minus 2. Oh, wait, 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 wait plus here, plus 2t cos t sine t plus t squared cos squared t plus 1. All that under the square root. 
Um, but it's not so bad, right? Because this cancels with that. Sine squared plus cos squared is one. Um, and then this is t squared sine squared. So we get, um, what do we get in the end? We get one plus one is two, two plus t squared. Okay, could have been worse, right? Okay, and so then if somebody said, hey, I want you to compute, um, I don't know, let's say, say they, they want you to compute the integral over C of, of something like Z ds, you can say, ah, I can do that. It's the integral from zero to two pi. So Z in terms of T is just T, and then we multiply by R prime, two plus T squared, um, and we integrate with respect to T. Uh, and that's not bad, we could do that one with the U substitution, I think I'm not gonna bother doing it, but we could, we could leave it at that. Um, okay, so we know how to do this. Uh, there's another thing that you can do which is occasionally useful. Um, you, can, you can also integrate. Um, instead of integrating with respect to arc length, you can integrate with respect to one of the coordinate variables, x, y, or Z. Um, and, and when you're doing this, I guess you're measuring, you know, rather than sort of measuring kind of accumulation along the curve, um, you're just sort of measuring the part that changes when you move in, say, the X direction or the Y direction or, or the Z direction. Um, so, for example, we could do, we'll stick with the same curve. Um, we could talk about something like the integral along C of some function p with respect to x, right? And for this curve, that's going to look like, well, it would look like the integral from 0 to 2 pi of, let's say, so, well, whatever p is, right? So we're going to have to do it in terms of r of t, so p of r of t. And then dx, well, what's dx? dx is just going to be x prime of t dt, right? So it only sees the change in x. It doesn't see the change in y or the change in, in z. So then I'd have to put in my, my x prime. Um, and, and, you know, let's just, you know, maybe it's useful to just say a to b. Forget about this particular example. x prime of t dt. We could set that up if we wanted to, right? Um, we could also do, say, the integral along C of, of Q dy. So we could do the integral from A to B of Q of R of T, and then Y prime of T dt. And we could also do the integral along C of some function R, and we could integrate with respect to Z, right? So that becomes the integral from A to B r of r of t, z prime of t, dt, okay? All right, so that, that's, you know, it's a thing you could do. Um, let me clean up my, my mess here. Now, we actually, we rarely are going to use these integrals individually. Um, we could spend some time trying to think about how to interpret them. Um, so we could think about kind of thinking of these as measures of kind of accumulation with respect to sort of the, the net change in X, net change in Y, net change in Z, something like that. But um, it's maybe not so important to, to worry about it. Um, you could also do these in, in combination. So we could do these in combination. So we could also think about the integral over some curve C of something like P dx plus Q dy plus R dz. Okay, we can consider integrals like this, right? Um, computationally, these are straightforward to set up. You just parameterize, you put in your x prime, y prime, z prime, 
get everything in terms of t, you integrate, you're done. Um, what we need to do is we need to spend some time thinking about what this actually is going to mean. Uh, certainly we can, we might notice some parallels here, right? We just been talking about vector fields. The p, q, r is intentional. It's supposed to remind you of a vector field with components p, q, and r. Uh, this, uh, this creature here that shows up in the integral, um, this has a name which you would see in maybe more advanced calculus textbooks. Um, this is what's called a differential form. Um, so we might call this, we might give it a name like say, maybe call it omega, so that this whole thing just becomes the integral over C of this form omega. And you could talk about things like that. Um, so we could think, well, why, why do you call it a differential form? I guess, well, it has the form of a differential, right? If you think about if you had a function f and you took the differential of some function f, right? It would be, it would be f, you know, df dx times dx, df dy times dy, df dz times dz, right? It has that form of a differential. It's just that p, q, and r, they may not necessarily um, come from the partial derivatives of some function, right? They might, they might not be obtained in that manner. So it's not a differential. Necessarily, it's a differential form. It has the form of a differential. Um, so kind of more modern approaches to vector calculus, um, which is not the approach that we are taking, um, take this sort of differential form approach. And they think, and we th you think of these differential forms as objects in your, their own right, and you look at their properties, you try to understand what they mean, um, and you work with them. One reason that these are nice to work with is, is you can play around and you can, you can, you can determine that you know, there's sort of you know, invariant under changes in parameterization and things like that. Uh, so we'll, we'll think about this for a little bit. We're gonna come back to it in the next video. We're gonna try to tie this in to vector fields. We're gonna see how this, how this fits together with the idea of a vector field.